any accusation that my view on a highly complex and publicised development could have been swayed by an encounter with a developer is not just simply wrong, but actually outrageous. The Cabinet Minister, the property baron, the text messages and the lost 40 million. What exactly went on between the Housing Secretary and Richard Desmond? Tonight, as the transcripts of the communication between the two are made public, we ask what made a minister greenlight a major property deal that had already been rejected. Also tonight, how to save British theatre before it's too late. We speak to one of the great Shakespearean actors of our time. Good evening. There is something almost old-fashioned about the story of a politician signing off permission for a billion-pound project and their later following a generous donation to the party coffers. In the middle of a pandemic, it was in danger of being overlooked. But tonight, under pressure, the Housing Secretary made public pages of transcripts to help us understand how such a deal got signed off. They show how Robert Jenrick overruled a planning inspector and gave Richard Desmond, a property magnate and one-time newspaper baron, permission to build a major development. That was two weeks before the developer donated £12,000 to the Conservatives and it was just one day before the council in Tower Hamlets, the poorest borough in London, introduced a community tax that would have seen Desmond pay around £40 million to support local projects. In the text transcripts, Mr Desmond makes reference to giving the Marxists loads of dough, a reference, it's assumed, to what he would have had to pay. Mr Jenrick reversed his decision last month to avoid what he called the appearance of bias. Well, Nick Watt, our political editor, is with me. Just take us through the background to this slightly complicated story, Nick. Well, this story's been bubbling along since the 31st of May when the Mail on Sunday uh, revealed uh, that Robert Jenrick had sat next to Richard Desmond at a Conservative fundraising dinner last November. So let's just look at this timeline to help us through. Now, last weekend, Richard Desmond told the Sunday Times that he'd shown the Housing Secretary a video promoting his £1 billion housing de development as the they sat down to dinner. Now, two months after that dinner, on the 14th of January, Robert Jenrick overruled a planning inspector to approve the development. And that, as you were saying, Emily, was one day before a change in the rules that would have meant that Richard Desmond would have had to have paid that £40 million local levy. And as you were saying, Emily, on the 21st of May, the Housing Department recommended that Robert Jenrick's decision uh, to accept the development should be quashed to avoid as you can see there, to avoid the appearance of bias. So what happened today then? Well, Robert Jenrick today released a mound of documents relating to this to comply with a Labour demand in a Commons debate. Now, these showed that after that dinner in November, there were text exchanges between the Minister and Richard Desmond. So on the 18th of November, Robert Jenrick had texted Richard Desmond to say that it was good to have met him that night over the dinner and that he hoped to see him again. Richard Desmond said he would arrange that meeting. Robert Jenrick replied, I'd like that. See you soon, Robert. And the next day he asked a parliamentary assistant to set up a meeting. But then if we look at these texts, we can see that two days later, Robert Jenrick had got rather cold feet about meeting Richard Desmond. On the 20th of November, Richard Desmond texted him to say... Good news, finally the inspector's reports have gone to you today. We appreciate the speed as we don't want to give Marxists loads of dough for nothing. That clearly is a reference to Tower Hamlets Council. But no banter from Robert Jenrick in his reply. And he said, Richard, as Secretary of State, it's important not to give any appearance of being influenced by applicants of cases. So I think it's best that we don't meet until after the matter has been decided. But then let's just look at this internal email from Robert Jenrick's department. Uh, and this clearly shows that that £40 million levy was very much in his mind. That's the loads of dough for Marxists, in Richard Desmond's words. Um, and look at what some officials in his department wrote on the 9th of January. On timing, this official wrote, my understanding is that the Secretary of State is 
was insistent that decision issued this week, we've got to get on with it, i.e. tomorrow, as next week the viability of the scheme is impacted by a change in the London CIL regime. Now, this afternoon in the House of Commons, Robert Jenrick mounted a very strong defence of his actions. Any accusation that my view on a highly complex and publicised development could have been swayed by an encounter with a developer is not just simply wrong, but actually outrageous. Who the applicant was is immaterial to my decision, as it always is and always should be. Always should be. I knew nothing of the donation that was made and would never have allowed it to influence my decision even if I had known about the donation. However, I'm not blind to the fact that things could and should have been done differently. On reflection, I should have handled the communication differently. So, Nick, with that admission, is the case now closed? Is Mr Jenrick's job safe? Well, as far as the Prime Minister is concerned, Robert Jenrick is staying. Uh, this evening, the Cabinet uh, Secretary wrote to the Labour Party and said that the Prime Minister's view is that in light of the release of all those documents, the matter is now closed. But there are Tory nerves. I was speaking to one former Cabinet Minister who said to me, I thought everything was fine for Robert Jenrick, but it doesn't look good after reading all those documents. So the only route for Labour after that letter from the Cabinet Secretary, which closes down any inquiry under the Ministerial Code, the only route for them would be to refer the matter to the Parliamentary Commissioner for Standards. Nick, thanks very much indeed. We did ask the government if we could speak to Mr Jenrick, but it appears he was not available. Joining us now, the Shadow Housing Minister, Mike Amesbury. Um, you, you just heard uh, from Nick, Boris Johnson said tonight he considers the case closed, and Mr Jenrick said the accusations against him are outrageous. Um, your thoughts on that? Yes, it, it seems it's another case of the, the rules don't apply to all, from Dominic Cummins and now to the Secretary of, of, of State. Look, this decision, it went to judicial review. So Tower Hamlet's Council took this to judicial review and actually it was found it was an unlawful, this direction was an unlawful decision. As, as, as you've said there in the piece, look, the um, uh, planning inspector actually advised against this. The, 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 the council were, were certainly... Uh, negotiating and about to apply a community infrastructure levy um, of actually up to £50 million, which the, um, the statement, the interesting statement from uh, Richard uh, Desmond that didn't want to give the Marxist dough for no reason almost whatsoever, is, well, actually what that would have given um, is potentially schools, GP surgeries, and very, very importantly, much needed affordable housing, one of the poorest communities in, in, in certainly the country. But Mike, uh, I guess the it, way you, you could look at it is that could have been a deal breaker and this was the chance to develop one of the poorest areas of the capital. Do you not credit Mr Jenrick of thinking like that? Well, look, we've got a, um, um, a, a series of extraordinary coincidences here, haven't we? We have a, a billion pound um, controversial property development. We have uh, Richard Desmond and uh, three of his senior executives happen to, by sheer coincidence, sit on the same table of the Secretary of State um, um, for, um, for housing. We, we, we also happen to um, um, have a, a, a major donor to the Conservative Party there armed with a, a, a video on his phone, a promotional video, which um, it's now admitted uh, uh, Robert General watched it for up to four minutes. In fact, uh, Desmond is, is, is quoted as saying, oh, he gets the gist after consuming that for four minutes. Hey, presto, two weeks down the line, £12,000 appears in the Tory coffers. And now we've actually forced well, the publication... We forced the publication of uh, these documents, it, it, these emails and these texts. And, it, and it's very, very, very clear that actually the day after this fundraiser, as you've rightly said in your report, 
there were these were actually uh, approaches from the Secretary of State to to Richard Desmond. Let, let me ask you. I mean, you, you could say it's a lot of pain to go through for for twelve thousand pounds of of Tory donations. I mean, that that sort of pales, I suppose, considering some of the other figures. Um, but are you asking Robert Jenrick to resign now? Look. This is about standards in public life. It actually takes us back to the to the 90s when we had um, um, cash for questions. In this case, it seems to be cash for favours. And again, you know, it, it's it's as though the rules only apply to the elite few in in, in government, and that's wholly unacceptable. Well, and this you, you know, I have to say, Mr. Jenrick and Mr. Desmond both completely deny that, and you've heard from Mr. Jenrick, uh, his own words, that the accusations are outrageous. Well, look, what is outrageous is that a um, an unlawful direction on this planning application, remember that, that's unlawful, it went to the High Court, a judicial review, and, and it, it, it was apparent bias, actually saved the developer up to £50 million. £50 million. But very importantly, that denied one of the poorest communities in our country um, real opportunities, real investment in affordable housing. You know, we clap our key workers and our care workers, our NHS workers, every Thursday. This will have housed those very important modern-day heroes. Mike Amesbury, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us.